Very good. Everyone's okay, filming everyone. We're, 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 we're like filming Jack and Jack's filming us. That's how much time is on there and how much time is going. It's a real pain. You guys are That's what it is. What's up? Prop and Nod in San Diego. Chilling at the uh, the bar that's right next to the Occupy movement in San Diego. We're in the city center. The occupiers are out here in front of the civic center. Um, what's interesting about the Occupy movement here is that there are no tents. And I think that was some kind of uh, ordinance that was passed by the city or the cops. And uh, our friend Jack Kenny uh, is going to be getting into all of that. Um, about what's going on here at Occupy San Diego. So Jack, you want to get open a little bit? Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in Occupy San Diego. Sure, I mean, uh, it was actually by accident Occupy San Diego, but I mean, I've been an activist most of my life, uh, kind of an underground activist. Uh, I went on a hunger strike for 52 days back in 2004 against electronic voting, things of that nature. I just Equality in our society is getting worse and worse and worse. Economic justice is out the door. The, the tricks that are going on just to deprive people of their income, their labor, their uh, their participation in society is just absurd. And when I heard about this Occupy Wall Street movement, I was on. It was that simple. I had to be on. And then I heard that it was happening here in San Diego. I was actually up in Occupy San Francisco, which I know you guys were at, on the 5th, because there was an announcement made that it was going to begin, the occupation will begin on October 7th, down here at Civic Center, but apparently they were meeting at Children's Park, and I guess I was more of a Twitter and a Facebook group, and I didn't hear about it. I was traveling around, so I was up on there on the 5th, the day they got swept out. I left there about an hour ahead of time, then came down here and joined, and I've been here ever since. Great, man. So what was the date that it actually launched here in San Diego? The day that they began, I guess, was like uh, September 29th, but that they actually started to occupy mm. was October 7th. Cool. And I was in for that. We had about 2,500 people jamming in this little square here. Cool. It was the best day I've ever seen in San Diego, which is a very quiet, conservative, non-activist town. Unless you're talking like uh, racial equality or marriage equality or some uh, job efforts. I've never seen anything like that before. Right on, that's great. So it's a big turnout for something that's very noble, you know, the 99%. So what I've noticed just in the short time here in San Diego, in terms of the, the layout of the occupiers compared to the other places we've been is they're not, nobody's intense, right? Um, is there a specific reason as to why the occupiers are not in tents out here? We've twice set up tents. The first time the, the police agreed we could have a footprint out here in, this, in the concourse. Uh, very specific footprints over here on the side. We had uh, like about 100 tents in here. And then suddenly it's been almost tantamount to psychological warfare. Every morning they would come in and this was wrong and that was wrong and everyone was fighting. Should we be talking to the cops? Should we not be talking to the cops? A whole group of a, a huge group of us, about 30% ran off to Balboa Park, which is nearby over here, and set up camp over there because the police told them that it would be okay up there. Yeah. They turned them down a cul-de-sac road, they cut off the road, someone got mugged that day, and a week later they blew them out of there. Uh, the very next day they came and gave us a court order saying that you have to be out of here because we were encroaching and an illegal lodging, even though the homeless have a right to be out there on the streets. We didn't for some reason. And then they blew us out. Uh, I got assaulted four times that day. Three people went up in jail that day. A number of people were assaulted. A number of people were pepper sprayed. For some reason, the cops missed two of our small tents. <laughs> in the crowd and they had to assault us four different times and finally we still had one tiny tent left. They allowed us to keep that as a symbolic presence. And we could only be here in sleeping bags and they would basically have a huge police presence around here and basically scare people from coming in. Even the business people didn't want to come in. Uh, eventually even that they didn't like because they popped up a couple more tents, a couple more tents. We had about 10 or 15 tents up. They swept us out again on uh, October 28th. In both instances, it was the night before the weekend, both Thursday nights, and the night before labor was going to show up in, in huge numbers. Both times we had 1,500 people here the next day staying in around, but no tents to speak of. So they crippled our movements in certain ways, but in other ways, with, uh, 
the public spirit and the public support got even greater, but obviously you can see the occupation is not here at all. Uh, the presence around here is unbelievable. They have barricades around, they have cops all over. Everyone has to funnel through one little gateway with about eight or nine cops. Mm -hmm. At nighttime today, there was a conservative politician bad mouthing us here, so they brought away some of the police presence. But usually there's a couple of paddy wagons, a couple of patrol cars. They have every single entranceway blocked off. They locked the doors at night. There's a few times where the people here were, were getting really squirmy, like they're going to come and rush us. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 27% of American military dollars come to this city. 80% of the cops have military backgrounds. There are police infiltrators in this group from the get go. I've been up at city council chambers and the aides, the chief of staffs have told me, yeah, I saw your parades. I knew three or four of the undercover cops in your parade. I mean, they're all over the place. There's cameras all over the place. They watch our every move and they are shutting us down. They are treating us like we're 9-11 terrorists here. Mm -hmm. I, I've never seen anything like this before. And yeah, obviously strange. a lot of the public is afraid to come here. The middle-aged housewives, even some of the minorities who have been targeted in the past. Mm -hmm. A lot of the homeless. So they don't want to be here. They don't want to be part of this effort because they know they're going to get targeted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet there's still a strong and resolute vibe that I feel. You know, there's just from being at the General Assembly tonight, it feels like people are really established in, in having their presence here. And there was even that sheet of paper that was being passed to get signatures for the resolution to, you know, permanently occupy the space. Um, and that sheet of paper was full, it was a huge the piece petitions. of paper, yeah. yeah. Um, what is your vision of where this could go? Uh, I don't think it's about San Diego. Uh, the, the people at City Council tell us that we're acting insular and that uh, we're not really, we're just thinking about tents. It's like, since the United Cash and corporates are considered free speech, but we're not allowed to have a tent as free speech. I mean, what, what could be more tantamount to what it really is to be free speech and the right to assemble, the right to be down here, the right to occupy public space? They will not allow it to happen. San Diego is really a blip on the, on the map. Uh, this is a huge movement that's taken off. What we did to the credit units, one million people transferred their accounts in a matter of two or three weeks. Mm. They're voting with their feet. It's yeah. phenomenal. I mean, yeah. you, you've talked before about the Ithaca project, I, I believe you called it. Yeah, uh, the Ithaca Hours, the uh, Ithaca alternative hours. local currency. Yeah. Yeah, right? they, they, they've been doing that for years, you know, in those local alternative currencies. It seems like this, when this opportunity comes up, when people start thinking about money and how the mechanisms of money actually work, and that the money system that we may, you know, be addicted to right now is based on scarcity, that there's never enough to go around when nature provides abundantly. You know, so those local alternative currencies seem to try to really sync up with that abundant nature of currency, you know, and keeping a current going. Because money is like blood, and the more that blood can flow, the more things are alive. You know? So N nature provides, labor provides. I mean, you put your labor in, how does it evaporate into some corporate guy's pocket? But that seems to be what happens over and over again. Uh, the vast majority of Americans have become credit slaves. It's that simple. We are a debtor nation, except for the one percent, which is controlling more and more of the wealth. It's taking down our nation. We have turned ourselves into a banana republic, and certain people are doing it deliberately. I think, in their own nearsightedness, that they aren't really realizing. We have given away our markets to too many countries, especially the Far East. They will never give us that, that, that market share back. They own 30, 40% of our market share. And what do we have over there? We have some screwdriver operation factories, we have some McDonald's, and we have some Toys R Us. We supposedly have Hollywood as well, but sooner or later people are going to get sick of watching American stars all the time. They're all going to develop their own music industries, their own Hollywood industries. Service industries, McDonald's, it's not doing it. We have to make, we have to manufacture, we have to provide for our own people. We, have, we live in the most abundant, paradigm, technological shifting time of our, of the, ever. And what are we doing with it? We're giving more and more to the fewer and fewer, while the vast majority of people are turning. Our nation, one sixth of our nation, is in poverty by 1970 standards. By 1970 standards. Yeah. It's a tough situation, you know, but uh, it seems like 
people out here are positive. People like yourself are really pushing it forward. You know, if we stay strong and resolute, um, we could really move forward and actually change something for the positive. You know, so uh, I'm just inspired by you know people like yourself and other cats that are sitting and occupying the public space and taking that land back you know and taking that space back and utilizing the voice that we all have you know in this country but also what nature has provided us you know we have a voice that's using you know so jack thank you man no problem you know, and uh, i appreciate it too man so that's it Prop it on jack kenny occupy san diego occupy the world occupy your life and squat the condo peace <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Thanks, Gabriel. Appreciate it.